This video will demonstrate how to use Solver in Microsoft Excel to set up a linear program to determine the optimal solution to a sporting goods product mix problem. Here's the data for our problem. Kelsey Sporting Goods Equipment Inc. makes two different types of baseball gloves, a regular model and a catcher's model. The firm has 900 hours of production time available in its cutting and sewing department, 300 hours available in its finishing department, and 100 hours available in its packaging and shipping department. The production time requirements and the profit contribution per glove are given in this table. A. What is the linear programming model for this problem? B. Develop a spreadsheet model and find the optimal solution using Excel Solver. How many gloves of each model should Kelson manufacture? C. What is the total profit contribution Kelson can earn with the given production quantities? D. How many hours of production time will be scheduled in each department? And E. What is the slack time in each department? The worksheet is already set up with our production department times in hours for each type of glove in cells B6 through C8, and the production times available in each department in cells D6 through D8. The profit contribution for each glove model is provided in cells G6 through H6. Requirement A asks us to construct the linear program for this model. Let's let R equal the number of units of the regular model and C the number of units of the catcher's model. As stated in the problem, the company is interested in maximizing total profit contribution. The profit of each regular glove is $5 and the catcher's glove is $8. So we can express this objective function as maximizing 5R plus 8C, where R and C are the number of units. Our model is subject to some production constraints relating to the time available in each department. Let's start with the cutting and sewing, or CNS department, where the regular and catcher's gloves require 1 hour and 1.5 hours of cutting and sewing time respectively, and the time available in the CNS department is 900 hours. We can express this constraint as 1R plus 1.5C must be less than or equal to 900. Next is the finishing department, where the regular and catcher's gloves require 0.5 and 0.333 hours of time respectively, and only 300 hours of finishing time is available. We can express this constraint in our model as 0.5R plus 0.333C must be less than or equal to 300. For the packing and shipping department, PNS, the regular glove requires 0.125 hours and the catcher's glove 0.25 hours, and there are only 100 finishing hours available. We can express this constraint in our model as 0.125R plus 0.25C must be less than or equal to 100. Finally, we can't forget our non-negativity constraint where R and C must be greater than or equal to zero. And that's the answer to requirement A. Next, requirement B asks us to develop a spreadsheet model and use Solver to find the optimal solution. I'll set up my model starting with a title for the number of gloves produced in cell A13 and headings for regular and catcher's gloves in cells C12 and D12. I'll shade the answer cells C13 and D13 green. These will be the quantities of each glove Solver will recommend producing. Now I'll create a table that includes each department in cells A17 through A19 and headings for time used, time available, and unused time in cells B16 through D16. Now I'll create a formula to determine the time used in the CNS department based on the answer cells and the production time. Click on cell B17 and type the equal sign. I'll use the sum product function for this to quickly sum the number of regular gloves produced multiplied by its required CNS time and the number of catcher's gloves multiplied by its required CNS time. Type sum product and select it when you see the function. For array 1, select the answer cells C13 through D13 and press F4 to lock the range so we can copy the formula without generating errors. Type a comma. Then for array 2, select the CNS times for the product in cells B6 and C6. Type closing parenthesis and press enter or return, and the result is 0, and that's because we don't have any numbers in our answer cells yet. I'll shade that cell green, then copy it down to the finishing and PNS departments using the fill handle. Next, for the time available, I'll just link to the available times in the data parameters. For the CNS time available, click on cell C17, type the equal sign, and select the time in cell D6. I'll shade that cell blue and then copy it down to the other departments using the fill handle. 
Next, for unused time, that's simply the difference between the available time and the used time. So for the cutting and sewing department, click on cell D17, type the equal sign, and select the available time in cell C17, followed by a minus sign, then select the time used in cell B17 and press enter. My answer is 900 because there's no used time yet. I'll shade that cell green and copy it down to the other departments using the fill handle. Now I'll enter a title for profit in cell A21 and a formula to calculate the profit using the sum product function in cell B21. The profit is simply the number of regular gloves sold times the $5 profit plus the number of catcher gloves sold times the $8 profit. Click on cell B21, type the equal sign, then start typing some product to bring up the function, select it from the list, or press the tab key. For array 1, select the answer cell C13 through D13 followed by a comma. Then for array 2, select the profit amounts in cells G6 through H6. Press return, and the answer right now is 0 because we haven't run our model yet. Now for the fun part. Select the data menu from the menu bar, and in the analysis group, click solver. If you don't see it, then you don't have it installed. And you can do that by clicking the file menu from the menu bar, then clicking options, then click add-ins, and make sure you see Excel add-ins. If not, click the drop-down arrow and select it. Then press go and check the box next to solver add-in and click OK. Then select the data menu from the menu bar again, and you should see the solver add-in in the analysis group. Once you've clicked the solver button, the solver parameters box should appear and this is where we will duplicate the model we initially set up. Click in the Set Objective box. This is where we want to indicate what our objective function is, and that's the profit formula we created in cell B21. So select that cell from the worksheet. Now we want to maximize profit, so make sure the button next to Max is activated. The default for solver is usually Max. Now click in the box under By Changing Variable Cells. This is where we will specify the production output range, cells C13 and D13. Now for the constraints. Click the Add button. Our first constraint is for the production limits. Click on the cell reference box, then select the production time used for each department in cells B17 through B19. Next, make sure the less than or equal to operator is selected in the middle of the box. Then click on the constraint box and select the production limits of 900, 300, and 100 units for each component specified in the cell range C17 through C19. Then click the Add button. Now click Cancel. Don't worry, this won't cancel the work we did. It will just close the constraint box. Here's where we can see our constraints, and it's always a good idea to double check before proceeding. Next, make sure the box next to Make Unconstrained Variables Non-Negative is checked. And for the solving method, Make sure Simplex LP is selected. Now click Solve. A new box appears, and you should be able to see the solution that Excel has generated. Now you want to make sure the Keep Solver button is selected, and click OK. And now we have a completed model, and we can see that the optimal solution is to produce 500 regular gloves and 150 catcher's gloves. That's the answer to requirement B. Requirement C asks what the total profit contribution is with the given production quantities, and we can see here in cell B21, the profit for this production mix is $3,700. Requirement D asks how many hours of production time will be scheduled in each department. We can find that here in cells B17 through B19, where we will need 725 hours of cutting and sewing time, 300 hours of finishing time, and 100 hours of packaging and shipping time. Finally, requirement E asks what is the slack time in each department, and that's our unused time here in cells D17 through D19. With this production mix, we end up with 175 hours of slack in the cutting and sewing department, but none in the finishing or packaging departments. Those are both fully utilized. And now we're finished.